Hi, and welcome to this 4NAV Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at 4NAV, and I will be your presenter today. As this Coffee Break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the Coffee Break. Today, we're going to look at printing Zebra language layouts from Business Central. Of course, you can use 4NAV reports to create and print labels. We have shown many times that this is easy and user-friendly. However, the Zebra designer can do some highly specialized things that you can't do with anything else, like adding RFID tags. Or you may have already designed your labels with the Zebra designer. It will be counterproductive to have to redo this work. To demonstrate printing Zebra labels, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step 2, I will create a label in Zebra language. In step 3, I will replace the placeholders with Business Central data. In step 4, I will print my Zebra language label. Let's start with the first step. Today I will work in a Business Central Cloud tenant with the Business Central 2023 Wave 2 release. I have installed the app source version of the 4NAV customizable report pack and I have executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. I have also set up the 4NAV direct print client on my, on my local machine and I've created the Zebra demo printer. I have installed the 4NAV Designer, which can be downloaded from the 4NAV website. I have also installed Visual Studio Code with the AL Language extension and the Zebra Designer. The first thing we need to do is create the Zebra Language Label Layout. We do this in the Zebra Designer, and we will store the layout in the Business Central database. So I'm going to open the Zebra Designer, and you will see that I've created a label in here with item and in between curly brackets number and description. Uh, in between curly brackets and later on I want to change everything that's in between the curly brackets with Business Central data. So I've got my item number description and in the barcode you will see that's uh, connected to the number inside curly brackets as well. If I test this you will see that my zebra printer prints the label with uh, everything on it as it is. So next thing I need to do is I need to store this label layout I'm going to select store, I'm going to store it to local disk, and I will store it as a PRN file. Hit save. Yes, let's replace that. And if I look at my PRN file, it's inside my VS Code extension right there. You will see that this contains the instructions for Zebra to print the label, and you will find that I've got my item number inside curly brackets and my description inside curly brackets and a bit further down I've got my bar barcode inside curly brackets as well. So that's my base label layout.prn and I'm going to save this inside my business central database. To do that I will find my 4 now file storage right there and I'm going to create a new entry there I will call it item label of type zebra and what you put in there, code and type, isn't that important. Uh, it's just need, you just need to be able to find it on, find it later on. And select the base label layout.prn file that I've created before. And that's all I need to do. I've got my base layout in here right now. I'm going to print this with my direct printers. So let's just have a quick look at what printer I'm going to use in my 4NAV direct printers. I've got a Zebra demo which is connected to a print server, uh, which happens to be in my local machine, and which happens to be the Zebra printer that I've got on the screen. When we want to print the Zebra labels, we need to load the Zebra layout from the 4NAV file storage, read the plain text content, and find and replace the data placeholders that I've created earlier. I will not code that live, instead I have created a simple AL extension project that does this for us. Let's go to the project. In the project, we've got the 4NAV, the uh, item list page extension, in that page extension, I've got an action print label. In that action, I load the Zebra layout from the 4 file storage. And you will see I, I use the item label and Zebra uh, code and type that I've used before. And then I've got an action to replace the placeholders. So let's go and have a look at what that code looks like. To get the layout from, from the file storage, I need to load the layout from the actual file storage, so I uh, set my calc fields. I get my file storage based on code and type, again that uh, item label and zebra that I've defined earlier. 
If it doesn't have a value, then I exit. If it does have a value, I load it in a stream. And finally, I read the content from the stream into a text variable. The next step is to replace the placeholders. And that's really simple. I load the item that I've got selected in the uh, page extension and I load the zebra layout text and I replace inside the zebra layout text, the text inside curly brackets NO and the text inside the description inside curly brackets with the item number and the item description. Finally, we want to print the zebra label. To do so, we need to manually call the 4NAV direct print code unit in our AL extension. So let's go to our AL extension. In our AL extension, you will notice in the uh, in the action, I've already got a call to zebra print or print layout. I will enable that. It's going to give an error message because of course it doesn't exist yet. So in the zebra print code unit, where we've got the load and replace functions, I'm going to create a new function, which is called print layout. And this print layout takes me, uh, takes a document name, the printer name and the zebra layout text that we've changed earlier. Remember, we replaced the, uh, the number and the description. To print this zebra layout, this text string, I'm going to create a new outstream in a template, write the zebra layout into the outstream, create an, create an in-stream, and finally I can call the direct print queue, which is the uh, four and a half direct print queue, and create a new record with the document name that is specified the printer name that I've specified, the in-stream, and I'm going to set the direct print queue content type to zebra. And in the call, you will notice that I call this with the uh, document name item label, the printer zebra, zebra demo, which we've created in our direct print setup, and the zebra layout in the text file. So save all of this, publish this into Business Central, and we wait a little while until everything is published into Business Central. I can open my items. So I'll grab an item. On this item, I've got my print zebra label, which I'm going to select. And that will print the zebra label for me. And you will notice in the label that the uh, number and description placeholders have been replaced. Let's recap what we just did. The first step to print zebra language labels is to create the zebra layout file in the zebra designer. We have used placeholders where we want to use business central data. The next step is to read zebra layout with AL and replace the placeholders with business central data. Finally, we called the 4NAV direct print code unit to print our label. One known issue we should mention here is that some zebra printers remember the state between jobs. Therefore, you may have two identical zebra printers that behave differently. A factory default reset could help solve problems. You can find all of the AL code for today's coffee break on GitHub. Thank you for listening to me so far. I can see we don't have any questions, so I will wrap up this coffee break. If you want to know more about 4NAV or if you want to download the 4NAV Designer and Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install 4NAV in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about 4NAV on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about Forna, please email them to support at fornav.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fornav.com slash coffee break. Thank you very much for listening to me today and goodbye.